Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing an important topic that is point of care ultrasound in cardiopulmonary arrest. Cardiac arrest is when the heart stops its mechanical activity leading to no circulation. Sudden cardiac arrest is unexpected and if resuscitation fails, it results in sudden cardiac death. Now, What is the role of ultrasound? Increasingly it being recognized in cardiac arrest scenarios at both in and out of hospital that ultrasound has got a vital role. There is a suggestion to include it in the ACLS algorithm as well. It is used for evaluating compression quality, diagnosing reversible arrest causes, monitoring interventions, providing prognostic information on the return to circulation and survival chances. Regarding the point of care, it has to be conducted by trained individuals in in hospital settings, especially in emergency and ICUs where an ultrasound machine is readily available. It aids in diagnosing reversible causes of cardiac arrest in non-defibrillatory rhythms. It helps in distinguishing a true asystole from fine ventricular fibrillation. The current CPR guidelines suggest using it when a reversible cause is suspected. The problems in implementation is that it ideally needs to be performed in a 10 second period to minimize interpretation during the resuscitation which requires expertise to accurately get the image and to interpret it especially during the compression periods. It is important in monitoring response to interventions and guiding procedures like tension pneumothorax decompression and pericardiosynthesis. So what is the role of ultrasound in cardiac arrest? The utility of ultrasound in cardiac arrest has been known since a long time. It is vital for diagnosing the uh, various conditions for safety, accuracy, accessibility and portability. It is a very ideal tool which can be used at the bedside. It allows the clinician timely diagnosis for point of care. In cardiac arrest, what is the protocol? It has to be done by experts. Cardiac ultrasound during arrest should be conducted by the most experienced person to ensure the accurate interpretation without disrupting the resuscitation process. Studies have shown that using ultrasound during cardiac arrest can delay the resumption of compression and increase resuscitation interruptions. Now, training medical specialists in efficient ultrasound using under stress is crucial to address this issue. So the ultrasound needs to be done by an expert who is very good in getting the images in a very short time because you have just 10 seconds. Now what are the technical aspects? Different probes are used for specific evaluation. A linear probe for lung assessment, a sectorial low frequency transducer for cardiac evaluation and a convex for abdominal evaluation. So the ultrasound needs to be performed transthoracically or transesophageally. Transthoracic is useful in assessing the reversible causes, while transesophageal, though gives a clearer picture, allows for better compression and quality assessment. However, to put a transesophageal echo during a cardiac arrest becomes a very challenging thing, so it is not something which is practical to be done. And there is also a need of research to see how these interventions are actually changing our outcomes. So the more studies are needed to see how effective and useful it is in managing cardiac arrests. So what is the objective? The main objectives are visualizing the cardiac activity. You can observe the myocardial movement excluding the blood flow and valve movement alone. It differentiates between an asystole and a fine ventricular fibrillation. Studies indicate that 10 to 35% of the patients diagnosed with a systole via ECG show some cardiac contraction in ultrasound. Now, presence of cardiac activity on the initial ultrasound suggests a high likelihood of ROAC and influence the decision of continuing the CPR efforts. And if the activity is seen, we can also give defibrillation. Demonstrating cardiac activity is crucial for prognosis and it indicates the potential for ROAC and survival. In the recent study, 33% of the patients showed cardiac activity correlating with higher ROAC and survival at hospital admission and discharge rates. The meta-analysis and ICU studies confirm that low ROAC and survival rates with no cardiac activity is detected but improved outcome with viable myocardium. Now, cardiac compression efficacy. It evaluates the efficacy of the CPR that is being given by observing the real-time compression and relaxation of the cardiac chambers. 
high quality compression ensures correct hand position force application and it is vital for roc and survival and it helps in assisting and optimizing the compression techniques by providing a visual feedback now how effectively it can be done in a real case scenario needs further studies to evaluate next is trans esophageal echo it is preferred method as it will not interrupt our compressions and help us in giving a very good visualization of the heart now it helps in adjusting the hand placement to prevent the obstruction of the vent ventricular outflow tract ensures adequate ventricular relaxation and good cardiac output it also offer prognostic insight and monitors the response to interventions like cardioversion and can better visualize conditions like pericardial effusion rupture and pulmonary embolism regarding decision making despite the prognostic value of cardiac activity the absence of a detectable contraction does not conclusively dictate stopping resuscitation efforts factors such as witted nest arrest early cpr slow down time or reversible causes can still result in successful resuscitation in some cases now what is the practical approach to using pokers in cardiac arrest preparation adjust the gain and depth setting in the ultrasound machine select appropriate transducer based on the assessment needs for the particular patient start the recording feature of the ultrasound device considering any potential delays and memory limitations initiate the cpr cycle now while the cpr is being done do all this thing allow the first cpr cycle to proceed in the meantime in your preparation make the machine optimal for assessment once this is done the clinician designates the cardiac arrest and prepares the equipment during this time now start the pokers once a non defibrillatory rhythm is identified initiate the pokers begin with sub zephoid due to minimize interference with the ongoing compressions record image for 10 seconds in accordance with the international resuscitation guidelines now image evaluation next step is once the cpr is continuing the expert is analyzing the images of the live ultrasound he reviews the images and tries to make a reversible cause which can help in diagnosing communicate the findings to the cpr team for a joint decision making next is ultrasound windows to be used during the surgery the primary window is the sub zephoid because it will minimize my compression timings the secondary is the apical four chamber view and during the pulse check other windows such as pulmonary window for plural guide parasternal short and long axis for additional assessment can be utilized within the 10 second limit extended assessments can be done uh, like e fast to assess for plural efficacy hemothorax or free intra abdominal fluid this assessment do not need to be synchronized with the cpr and can provide crucial diagnostic information our main objective is to identify reversible causes of cardiac arrest it should be integrated in the cardiac arrest management checklist considering that 5h 5t's are being evaluated now this is a cycle which can be used first you start with the sub zephoid view then in the second break you can go to the apical view finally you can do the, uh, the parasternal views and the plural views and lastly if the patient still hasn't recovered you can do your abdominal assessment as well the diagnosis of reversible causes of cardiac arrest the impact on early diagnosis identifying the reversible cause can significantly influence survival rates by enabling prompt targeted interventions now echocardiographic protocols are there which can be used like the fate protocol it was developed by jensen et al it assesses the sub zephoid apical parasternal and plural windows aiming for a comprehensive assessment the rapid cardiac ultrasound it is a simplified approach focusing solely on the sub zephoid window for basic assessment suitable for clinicians with basic echo training the next is the fear or feel protocol it expands the evaluation to sub costal parasternal apical window showing improved outcomes the next is a cause protocol it incorporates all the important cardiac views along with pulmonary assessment and it is being widely adopted in clinical practice next is the pea protocol for by testa it integrates ultrasound into the acls algorithm including epigastric pulmonary and abdominal evaluation during the cpr next is sesame protocol it 
proposes a sequential approach starting with lung scans to identify pneumothorax embolism and glide fluid therapy it also involves checking the dbt and massive abdominal bleeding concluding with cardiac evaluation core protocol it is a consensus of an expert panel which goes does the routine cardiac views and the key views being the subzephoid apical four chamber or if needed parasternal long axis additional focus application beyond the cardiac evaluation is for confirming the et tube placement detecting dvt and identifying sources of blood loss now there is no clear consensus on how to use these protocols and it can be made as per your own practice and your own patient group now the most important thing that we can detect is the cardiac tamponade which is a reversible cause of cardiac arrest in this it's a life threatening condition where some fluid is accumulating in the pericardial space due to traumatic or non traumatic causes even small acute effusions can cause tamponade whereas pericardium can accumulate at large volumes if it is a chronic condition now in the echo findings the key signs is pericardial effusion is visible in the subzephoid apical and parasternal views effusion appears anechoic or echogenic depending on the cause with traumatic effusion being more hyperechoic effusion classification can be done minor is less than 1 cm moderate is less than 1 cm deep which is circumferential around the heart and large is more than 1 cm and circumferential around the heart but if there is tamponade it is expected to be large and circumferential now the differentiating the effusions the pericardial effusion are located in front of the descending aorta and above the posterior pericardial reflection whereas pleural effusions are behind and below this reflection distinguishing between pericardial fat pad and effusion is crucial with the fat pad appearing hyperechoic and located more anteriorly now diagnosis is a tamponade the presence of pericardial effusion allows does not confirm a tamponade specific signs such as light atrial systolic collapse right ventricular diastolic collapse can indicate but may not be visible in a cardiac arrest patient hyperdynamic atrial contraction and exaggerated chamber movements may precede a cardiac arrest ivc evaluation should be done a plethoric ivc with increased arterial pressure supports the diagnosis of tamponade with high sensitivity and specificity in advanced finding transvalvular flow velocity on doppler can further confirm tamponade but require more expertise and are less applicable during cpr management in case of cardiac arrest with signs of tamponade urgent ultrasound guided pericardial synthesis is life saving so these are the major views the subcostal is the view in which you should get the tamponade and should also drain it apart from that you can also do your apical four chamber if there is some doubt or the subcostal ivc views to see for plethoric ivc next reversible causes pulmonary thromboembolism now the direct sign is visualization of the thrombus itself within the pulmonary artery although this is often challenging to achieve due to the limitation of the thoracic echo in visualizing these vessels though you can look for indirect signs like rv strain that is acute dilatation of the right ventricle compared to the left ventricle in a key indirect sign in normal state the ratio is 1.0.6 is to 1 and the ratio is 1 is to 1 or greater suggesting significant rv dilatation indicating pulmonary embolism the appearance of d shaped rv in parasternal short axis due to septal flattening is another indicator of rv overload the septal abnormality in patients nearing cardiac as the deviation of the septum towards the lv paradoxical systolic septal movement and septal flattening in diastole can be observed the macanal sign that is characterized by akinesia of the right ventricular free wall but normal motion of the apex while suggestive of pulmonary is not exclusive of this condition differentiating acute and chronic rv overload chronic overload is seen in condition like pulmonary atrial hypertension typically leads to r v wall hypertrophy that is more than 0.5 mm in acute the rv wall remains thin due to sudden increase in the pressure without sufficient time for any hypertrophic adaptation additional features that you can find a prominent trabeculated rv and distinct papillary muscles may also be noted in the context of the pulmonary embolism in this case you can look in for dvt to corroborate your findings so these are the major views again subzephoid is usually sufficient though for confirmation you can look for the apical four chamber next is tension pneumothorax this is again a very important thing tension pneumothorax is a critical reversible cause which can be seen in traumatic even atraumatic cases 
the diagnostic challenges are uh, physical examination finding can be clear in some settings diagnosing tensor pneumothorax in mechanically ventilated can be very very challenging the ultrasound findings are you will find absence of pleural slide that is the barcode or stratosphere sign will be seen and the absence of b signs now the lung point is very rarely visible but indicates the exact point where the air is being seen and the lung slide is being seen the sensitivity and specificity of these things are very high and with these findings you can go for a pleural tapping the common pitfalls are the physiological mediastinal point sign which may resemble the lung point but is characterized by the absence of lung sliding with underlying cardiac movement can lead to diagnostic confusion. The management as we have seen is acute decompression of the pneumothorax enhancing the safety and efficacy of the procedure. Hemothorax in trauma can also be a cause and it can lead to hypovolemic shock and cardiac arrest. So this can also be seen in the pulmonary examination. Volume estimation of the exact hemothorax can be done by various formulas. And though it is not something which is to be done during the cardiac arrest. So this is a typical lung ultrasound finding of pneumothorax. Here you can see the barcode or stratosphere sign. The next important cause is hypovolemia. Shock, especially hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock in trauma patient can lead to quick cardiac circulatory collapse. Other shock types like cardiogenic distributed and obstructive should also be considered. Echocardiographic signs, hypovolume is indicated in ultrasound signs such as accelerated heart movements, hyperdynamic pattern, ventricular obliteration, reduced ventricular size and KISS sign showing ventricular and papillary muscle touching due to low volume. IBC assessment will show a empty tank sign by the IBC diameter is very low and it is collapsing. Rust protocol helps in examining the pump tank and pipes and also find exactly the type of shock. Advanced method like the rush protocol lacks the precise definition for each limitations and integration in a multi-organ ultrasound approach can enhance the diagnostic in non-traumatic symptomatic hypotensions. Ultrasound in pre and post arrest cases it is useful because shock signs after cardiac arrest will always be there for making etiological diagnosis post arrest can be done to find if hypovolemia is a cause of cardiac arrest. Now, guiding intervention focus allows real-time monitoring of the patient response to intervention and assist in guiding diagnostic therapies. In the focus findings, you will find the kissing ventricles and the collapsed IVC. Now, what is the prognostic value of ultrasound? Now, there are various prognostic uh, protocols, but no clear consensus on which approach is to be considered superior. Training and interruption is important because you need to train your staff how to do and when to do and minimizing the interruptions because we don't want to prognosticate while interpreting interrupting the cardiac arrests now casa protocol study a study involving cardiac arrest sonological assessment showed that trained residents could reduce cpr interruption time suggesting that proper training and use of focus can be optimized research also indicate that focus can lead to longer resuscitation efforts higher intervention rates and presence of cardiac activity on focus is associated with improved outcome including roic and survival times now there have been many meta-analyses that conclude that focus during cardiac arrest is effective in identifying reversible causes, predicting short term outcomes and absence of spontaneous cardiac movement on echo correlates with lower chance of survival influencing decision on resuscitation efforts. Ventilation and ultrasound findings, the effect of mechanical ventilation or ultrasound during CPR are not fully understood yet. Highlighting a need for further research and optimal ventilation strategy in cardiac arrest scenario remain to be seen. Now, while not directly linked to improved mortality, ECHO is valuable for diagnosing and prognostic purposes in cardiac arrest. The detection of cardiac activity is a good prognostic marker, emphasizing the technique's utility in assessing cardiac arrest patient. So to conclude, ultrasound is pivotal diagnostic tool in intra-hospital settings, particularly in emergency and ICUs, where the ultrasound machine is readily available because it is safe, accurate and portable and it will help us in finding the reversible causes of cardiac arrest promptly and which cannot be done by the monitor and the ABGs. Now, POCUS enables clinicians to assess compression quality, diagnose reversible causes of cardiac arrest, monitor interventions and provide vital prognostic information.
the integration of high quality studies and control trial is essential to solidify the role of focus within the universal cpr algorithm training medical specialists in efficient ultrasound use and implementing checklist can enhance rapid image acquisition minimize interruptions during critical care situations so this is algorithm which summarizes how to do focus in cardiac arrest scenario so once you get a cardiac arrest and you have initiated the cpr in that time the expert in ultrasound will switch on the machine optimize the probe and locate the window which he or she is going to use so once the first cycle of cpr is done and the pulse check is being done you have 10 seconds window in that you do a subcostal view and in that view check the cardiac chambers and the ivcs now once you have got those images in the 10 seconds the cpr is to be initiated after that time you recheck your images discuss among yourself try to make a diagnosis if you get a diagnosis then treat accordingly if in that time you did, could not make a diagnosis you think some other window will be of useful say for example a lung slide window or a apical four chamber window then focus on that particular window that you need to acquire and once the next cycle of cpr ends you have 10 seconds to do any particular window so do a 10 second apical or lung sliding because as of now you have some idea what you are going once you have anything in that record that and initiate the cpr again interpret the image try to do come to a conclusion if there is any reversible cause and prepare for interventions if you have made a diagnosis if after all this you still have some doubts then again try to localize which window you can focus on in the meantime you can do a lot of scans in which you do not need to interrupt the cpr like looking for dvts in the femoral scans the abdominal scans to look for any source of bleeding or you can do a pleural view also away from the compression site so this is a protocol which can be used and which may be used but important thing that you need to remember is the most trained person must do the imaging because you need the image within 10 seconds and always record the images so that you can evaluate it during the next cycle of cpr and importantly once you do make a diagnosis do record it and do your intervention accordingly thank you for your patience